this is the continuation of the handout we had where we established the geometry of several molecules. We begin with ICL5. We find out that ICL5 has 42 electrons in its structure because iodine has 7 chlorine and 7 of 5 chlorine atoms. So 6 times 7, 42. We draw a preliminary Lewis structure. We notice that there's two, uh, there's a lone pair on the iodine on the central atom. So there's a steric number of 6 with one lone pair. And that points to a square pyramidal geometry. And now I've drawn it in perspective with these lines here to show how it looks like a, a square based pyramid. These are not bonds, they're just perspective lines. The actual bonds are here, these four. The uh, iodine chlorine bonds are polar. Iodine is less electronegative than chlorine, so the, the electrons are spending more time close to chlorine. So the molecule is not and the molecule is not symmetrical. So it is a polar molecule overall. It has polar bonds and it retains its polarity. Xenon tetrachloride uh, has 36 electrons, two lone pairs on the central atom. So it has a steric number of six, four bonding pairs with two lone pairs. Uh, that suggests a square planar geometry. So I've drawn it with the the. Um, lone pairs pointing up and down, and uh, you show it that, that the chlorine atoms are, are in a plane. Now remember, depending on how you draw the molecule, you'll have a square planar geometry, although it might not look at first glance as a, as a square planar molecule. But you always recall that um, the orientation is such that there's a 90 degree angle between each of the um, things that are attached to the central atom. And in, in, a, in an octahedral geometry, all the bond angles are equivalent. It's always 90 degrees. So why do the lone pairs uh, appear one above and one below? Because you don't want a lone pair, lone pair interaction at 90 degrees. So the lone pairs will end up one at one end and one at the other end. So they can have a 180 degree angle between them. And the next level of interaction would be between lone pairs and bonding pairs. When that, that's at 90 degrees. So the best situation there is to have them far apart because the criterion is the lone pair, lone pair interaction. With selenium uh, hexachloride, we have 40 electrons and uh, a steric number of 6. No lone pairs, so that's straightforward. It's octahedral. All the bond angles are 90. They're all equivalent. Any way you flip this molecule, it's going to look the same. Uh, again, these are not bonds. They're just perspective lines to show you the geometry of the molecule. This molecule is also nonpolar due to symmetry. Xenon, I forgot to say, xenon tetrachloride is also nonpolar due to symmetry, cancelling out the polarity of the bonds. The bonds remain polar, just that overall the molecule itself is nonpolar. And one thing I'd like to add with regards to Vesper theory, when you see bond angles, you'll uh, notice that if a molecule has no lone, lone pairs in a tetrahedral arrangement, the bond angle will remain 109.5. With the addition of a lone pair, pushes down the other uh, bonding pairs so that they go down to 107, for example, in the ammonia. And if there's two lone pairs, it, it pushes the bonding pairs even more. You see the bond angle decrease down to 105. And this question uh, I've put together, it makes a nice exam question where you, you would, could be asked, show the geometry of the sulfur trioxide, the sulfite, and a sulfate anion, uh, and you see that it ends up being trigonal planar, pyramidal, and tetrahedral. When you draw through all the Lewis structures, and you take care of, you account for all the fact that there, the fact that there are um, uh, formal charges. So you redraw the structure to diminish the more formal charges, keep it in account that, for example, a sulfite anion would have a negative two charge. Uh, you end up with some double bonds. But the steric, that doesn't affect the steric number. The steric number of this central atom is still four. You have one, two, three things attached to it, and you count the lone pair as one. So steric number of four with one lone pair suggests pyramidal geometry. This is how you would draw it for the sulfite anion. And of course, recall that when you have uh, one double bond, that double bond is shared along the three positions. So in fact, this is four bonds shared on three positions. So this molecule has one and one third bond character. And the sulfate anion would have uh, six bonds shared over four positions, so that would be one and a half bond character. Notice that it's tetrahedral because the steric number is four, lone pair is zero. So for your homework, what you could try then is to draw the, the Vesper, what Vesper theory would suggest 
to the geometry of the perchlorate, chlorate, chloride, hypochlorite, and chlorine dioxide. So all these are charged with minus one. Chlorine dioxide has no charge. That would be a good homework question or exam question.